Hey, what's up everybody? Sin City Cyclops. Robert Benson here and uh, was requested a tutorial for the uh, mocha tracking video that I did here on uh, YouTube. Now let's switch on over to that. This one right here. Um, now unfortunately I had a computer crash a while back and uh, I don't have the original footage so I had to download my own video, uh, cut it and uh, create a new sign. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with that tutorial right now. Okay, so the first thing I did here was to uh, create a sign in Photoshop. I basically just used the uh, custom shape tool here and picked this uh, little sign and drew that out and filled it and stroked it, put some text on it, and then you want to put an alpha channel on it. And uh, one way you can do that is uh, Grab the magic wand tool, set the tolerance to zero, and then click right here, and that will select all the white outside. And then you can invert that selection by just going to select invert. Um, and then you want to press this button right here, which is to create a layer mask. And then you'll also notice here that in your channels, uh, you have this, uh, this new alpha channel here. Um, then you want to save this out. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that here. Uh, we'll save the Photoshop file though, and then I'll quit. Okay, then the next thing I did here was I brought my footage into uh, After Effects and I exported it to a TIFF sequence. And that's what I'm going to pull into Mocha. So we'll go over here into Mocha and I will open that. And here's my frame. We'll just pull that in. And you want to make a note of the frame rate of the video. Um, it does say 23976, however, over here in Photoshop, the smoke uh, file that I used um, here, um, you want to make sure that uh, you're, you've got the same frame rate, so I'm going to uh, click on that and hit play, and it's going to say FPS is 23.976, so um, you do want to make sure that uh, your frame rates are the same. This is, by the way, the uh, Action Essentials from uh, VideoCopilot.net. Um, that's where the smoke uh, came from. So over back in Mocha Pro, we have the right frame rate, and we want our pixel aspect ratio to be 1. And uh, click OK, bring in. Um, I've already done this, so I'm going to say yes to overwrite it. And there I have my um, alarm box. It's actually just an electrical box on the side of my house. And so that's the reason I had to create the sign. Uh, now, since Mocha is a planar tracker, um, it's important to try to keep this on uh, one plane. Uh, I, when I first trying to do this, and the reason I had to do the Lynda.com training before I figured this out was I had originally, I was just you know, dragging one of these uh, X blinds uh, just anywhere and trying to track this thing. And um, while it did track it, there was, there was some slipping and sliding going on because um, I'm tracking several planes here. Uh, this top part of the box is actually on a different plane than this box. Of course, this is a different plane. The top is a different plane. The wall is on a different plane. So uh, since Moga is a planar tracker, um, you want to make sure that you uh, track on one plane. and delete that layer and start over. So finally, the solution that I came up with was, was since I'm going to put the sticker here on the front of the box, I'll just go ahead and track the front. Um, and just to make sure I'm capturing everything in a single plane, I went uh, pretty much something like this. Um, now there's some raised text down there in the corner uh, of this box, and so I wanted to avoid that because even though it's raised very, very little, it is a separate plane, so um, that would keep this from slipping. Uh, so then I just left my tracker there, and I did want to turn on perspective, since there is some perspective uh, changes, there's some parallax due to the handheld nature of the shot. So I did turn on the perspective button here, and then um, I press track 4, which I'll do now, and uh, that will start tracking. And you can see here in the uh, zoomed views for the keyframes, that's sticking pretty good. There might be a little bit of movement. But I'm going to pause the video here while this is tracking, and when it's done, I'll be right back. All 
Okay, now that the um, tracking is done here, uh, you can see that uh, this thing is sticking pretty well with the field color here and the zoomed up views. Looks like it might be slipping just a little bit. Um, and so in order to check that, uh, you want to turn on this uh, planar surface and uh, you want to move that uh, into place pretty much in the area that you want to cover. I'm just going to cover the whole front of this box here, uh, get pretty close to the corners. It doesn't have to be exact, um, but pretty close on this planar surface. And uh, get that in place because that's where I'm going to put the uh, sticker. Um, the, the actual X plan itself doesn't really matter as much as the planar surface. I also want to turn on the planar grid so I can get an idea of uh, how well this is sticking. I'm going to uh, up the grid um, subdivisions here so I can get a better look at that. And uh, I'll close that and I'll press play to get an idea if there's any slipping. It does look like it's sticking fairly well. Might be a little bit of slippage um, looking at it up here. It's kind of hard to tell on this because it's off of the 3D surface, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Now, um, one of the ways you can uh, double check that is going here and to stabilize, uh, click on all motion, and then press play, and we'll stabilize everything around that general area so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Um, and if we zoom in, Actually, it looks like it's doing pretty good. Um, and this is pretty much the situation that I had um, after I had done the Linda.com training and stopped training all those crazy tracking points. Um, so, oops. Everything. So everything uh, looks pretty good here. We'll go back into track mode and I'm going to press pause for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we uh, have this thing tracked and it uh, looks like it's sticking pretty good, um, the next thing you do, of course, is to export the tracking data. And uh, you pull this down, I'm going to select, uh, let's see, After, uh, After Effects, uh, Corner Pin, Sports Motion Blur, copy that to the clipboard, and then go back on over to After Effects into my okay, alarm box composition. And, okay, now there's something uh, that I wanted to um, repeat here because I think it bears repeating. Um, I actually just I created a new uh, composition or closed all my compositions, basically, um, and wanted to re-import that uh, footage from the alarm box um, to show you that you really need to make sure that the footage is the same uh, frame rate. So when you go in here uh, and right click on this and click interpret footage main, um, we have 30 frames per second, uh, which is what this is set to right now. And if you remember over here in Mocha, um, under here under the, uh, the clip tab, you'll see that the frame rate is 23.976. Now if you over here in, um, in After Effects, if you put anything other than 23, uh, 23.976 you're going to have a problem so I'm going to go ahead and, and type in 23.976 and hit OK and that will make sure that this comp is 23.976 exactly I'm going to drop it into the new comp uh, onto the new comp button there yeah, basically uh, at that point you can, you can do a quick RAM preview here uh, and as soon as it renders you can verify uh, the frame rate, okay, real time 23.976, so that's exactly what we want, and um, of course you can also uh, you can see that up here as well. Uh, now, to get the sticker on from the box, uh, this is the way I did it, I created a new solid uh, comp size, it doesn't matter what color, and then Precompose that, so layer precompose all this box. Right. Okay, and then I went and hit edit and paste, 
and I paste the corner pin data that I copied uh, over from Mocha um, onto that composition. And you can see that that is sticking fairly well. Uh, I want to make a note here that if your playhead is anywhere other than on the very first frame or frame zero, when you paste the corner pin data, you're going to have a problem that is not going to work and you'll have some drift. For example, we'll probably do something like this. Okay, so make sure that the playhead is at zero when you paste that. Um, now we can go ahead and um, we can go into this uh, composition box front and import our la 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 sticker, sticker file and just drop that in. I'm holding shift so this will snap to the middle. And, uh, I'm going to turn off the solid because we don't need to see that. Uh, now it's going to it's going to look weird. Um, it's going to be squished in, so we actually need to uh, stretch it out. Um, try to kind of eyeball where you want the edges in relationship to the edge of the box out here. Um, that's probably a little big. A little bit smaller. Okay, and uh, you can also uh, move it around in here if you want higher or lower. And then, the, of course, the sticker will stick. Now, now that you have this corner pin data, um, a lot of the things you can do here. Um, uh, by the way, another thing that the thing I did was I put a curves adjustment on this sticker to make it look a little um, less bright. Or um, don't quite remember. I know I did a, a curves adjustment to it uh, to the original one because um, it look does look a little bit fake. <clears throat> the, the other one I spent a little more time on, so it didn't look quite as fake. But uh, there you have it. Now, in order to get all your other um, items to stay in the right place, what I did was create a new null object. And uh, I'm going to use the corner pin data to drive the position of the null. So uh, basically, I'm going to open up the uh, both of these. And actually, I'm going to P for position, and then, oops, and then go under the effects, and corner pin, and then just pick one of these corners um, for uh, the position of the null. You want to hit Alt and then click on the little stopwatch to bring up this uh, pick whip uh, expression dialog, and then just pick with that to I think I picked the lower left uh, corner here. I don't know why it doesn't really matter, I don't think. And uh, then you have, of course, an null object now attached uh, to the lower left-hand corner. And you can base all your other effects, your smoke and sparks and all that good stuff um, off of that. Um, really quickly, I'll go ahead and import um, the smoke, this is from uh, videocopilot.net. This is Action Essentials 2. Um, I think I use smoke 2, not 100% sure. The reason I picked 23.976 frames per second um, in this com uh, this project is because these are 23.976 uh, uh, footage from Action Essentials 2. I could, like, you could always interpret it to a different frame rate, but I figured I'd just use that. So uh, basically now I just want to drop your uh, smoke in, um, kind of roughly get it in place, and going to move this over because I don't want it to start right away, and uh, then I just put a mask on it. So that it doesn't look like it's coming out of a square and then feather it a little bit. And then I need to actually take the position of uh, the smoke layer and alt click on the um, position 
and attach that to the position of the null as well. Just pick up that to the position here. And then um, it's gonna move it's gonna move that layer but you can uh, change the anchor point of the smoke. Kind of move where you want it. I turn this into a 3D layer as well, um, so that I can change the orientation a little bit. And uh, and I think um, because the smoke kind of already starts at frame one, um, actually. I might have animated the mask. I don't remember exactly what I did, or uh, just animated the uh, opacity here uh, of the smoke by turning to zero, and then turning this up there. And I'm, I'm not real sure. I don't remember quite what I did, but you can see now that just turn the mask off. Um, again, I did spend a little more time on it, but the, the, you get the idea. Uh, now the smoke, of course, is sticking uh, as well. And I, of course, I moved it over. Uh, and when I did the sparks, um, and with the sparks, it was uh, uh, similar. Um, don't remember, again, which one I used. Pick any old one, it really doesn't matter at this point. Um, put those in. It's... Yeah, those are definitely not the sparks I use, but um, at this point, it's just very basic. Um, kind of did the same thing I did with the smoke. Um, put these somewhere around here. Uh, started on um, just a little bit uh, before the smoke. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, that's actually going in the wrong direction, it looks like. And uh, <clears throat> again, put on uh, same thing here position, I'll click on the position dialog. And uh, we can actually, you know, we don't even need to do that at this point. We could just um, parent this to the smoke. Make that real easy so that it moves along with it. And then uh, I believe I put a mask along the edge here so it looked like it was coming out of the box. Oops. And then um, create shape layers here. Move back into my mouse tool. Okay, kind of just Along the edge of that, so the plate was coming out of the uh, under the box kind of thing. And again, I did spend spend obviously a lot more time on the original one uh, than I am on this, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of how I went about it. And uh, so, hopefully, this um, has helped you. And uh, if you are interested in more tutorials, you can uh, follow me YouTube Sin City Cyclops. Um, also, Facebook.com slash Sin City Cyclops, and also on Twitter at Sin City Cyclops. Uh, so, hopefully, you enjoy this, and we'll talk to you soon.